What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners, shout out to the Point of View crew, and trip on this. And also shout out to Homeboy, and I apologize, man. Names, I should have memorized the name. I've been dealing with this dude through Instagram the last handful of days. And he's the one who's made these thumbnails you've been seeing. As you can tell, they're a different style. They're different from what I usually made. And to be quite honest, I'm getting burned out on making thumbnails, man. So if you want to make some thumbnails and show, shoot them to me, I will surely use them. And shout out to Homeboy who's making these. And my bad, I didn't memorize the name, dog. But thank you, I appreciate you. And this video right here, man, is what I guess I used to refer to as Viewer's Choice. I no longer do Viewer's Choice. You know they say by do things by... Uh, by demand, well, sometimes you do things by undemand. I just feel like they were very, they weren't very demandful. Viewers' choice, kind of like, eh. So you give people what they want. But I saw these questions lingering, and I just couldn't resist. I said, we have to do one, one last viewers' choice. We're just gonna call it a Q and A, though. We're not gonna call it anything. We're just gonna do this video, of course, video. And basically, the premise, the concept is, you guys ask me questions through community tab. It's a Q and A of sorts, if you will. Oh, I might. So here are the questions, and they're a grip of them. So the first one, Evergreen. Shout out to you, homeboy. Here's how my brain works. I wrote down Evergreen. I write down the question, and I write kind of like an answer down. I use highlighters, because that's how I like to get down. And Evergreen, like, what kind of highlighter thing I used? A green one, of course. Evergreen. Green highlighter. What's up, homeboy? He said, any homeboys that are AB, trip on this. Pardon me. One time, once upon a time in my neighborhood, I was kicking back. And someone called me and said, I'd come over and help out one of the homeboys, one of the older homeboys. I go over and meet this dude. Right away, I can tell he's very, very serious. It's him and his old lady. He's very quiet. He's not doing hardly no talking. His old lady's doing majority of the talking, but she's only speaking his will. It's not like she was running the show and just voicing her own opinion. She was speaking what he wanted to because he was a quiet dude, quiet and serious. But he seemed very, very cool. Ran around them for a couple of days. Helped them get their car going. We did some other things. We just kicked back and chilled. And then, I don't know, shoot, probably like several months later, someone was talking about big homeboys. Big homies from my side of town. And his name got brought up. Because he used his name, obviously. When I met him and kicked it with him for that weekend, he introduced himself with his name. I never heard of him. But then his name got dropped as one of the big homeboys, as one of the real ones. Like a straight up, like, yeah, one of those dudes. All the way real. And I was like, damn. Hey, but I wasn't surprised. I can tell. I can tell he's all the way with the business. They have this cool, but he didn't throw it out to his affiliation. So, never that. They never used to do. And I didn't see any tattoos. Got talked back on it. Like, hmm. Like I said, I was not surprised. And then I've brought this up before, man. But I, could, I gotta say it again. Especially in light of the question. I was on a yard once. And there's a dude that was a brand member. He wasn't in a power position, which is kind of a trip. You'd expect him to be. But he's also one of the first ones from the 70s. He was an old man. He joined a long, long time ago. And a lot of times when they get old like that, they're allowed to step away. They don't have to be in a power position. They can kind of, I don't know all the rules, regulations regarding that. But I know he wasn't in a power position. He wasn't even throwing it out there, his affiliation. It was just word of mouth. Everybody knew. They also knew the way back in the day, one of the sellies came up, took the asphalt, found the asphalt challenge. Two dudes went in the cell, only one came out. Yeah, yeah, Sully didn't make it. That, and that was the story. That was the word on the yard that, you know, one of the Sully's. And then I, like a big old dummy, and it was early in my prison career. It was one of my first violations on my first number, walking laps and talking to him. And he was showing interest in me, too, like he wanted to be buddies. And I thought that was kind of cool. Because this is a dude, he's like, man, he's like iconic. So we're talking and walking laps. And I ask him, hey, whatever happened to the situation with you and your Sully? And his whole countenance fell. He looked at me like, I can't believe you said that. And I thought to myself also, I can't believe I said that. And he just didn't even say, bye, bye, kiss my ass, nothing. Just split across the yard. He was gone. Our conversation was immediately over. And I felt like a, like I had freaking nuts hanging from my forehead. I couldn't believe I asked. But we were buddies. We were hanging out. We were chilling. But in hindsight, what it was, was I was getting ready to get out. And he never talked to me before this. I, I was like 10 days of the house. We did the house. So he was playing me close. He's preparing me. He was grooming me to get out and do something for him. That's why, I mean, come on, all of a sudden, I'm 10 days at the house. And he's, hey, Splinter, what's up, my boys? Walk a couple laps. And we're talking, a couple days kicking it. And I throw it out there, hey, what happened to Sully? He's like, shoom. He no longer wanted any favors from me. 
Hey, bro, triple net. But hey, that's what happened there. So man, that's the lead story right there. Armando Gomez. How do you smoke weed without it stinking the place up? It does stink the place up. Well, I was at Solidad, level three yard. It's Shasta and it's Whitney Hall. I was a porter in the morning and you wake up and you get everything in the trays ready to serve breakfast. It just stinks. The whole place is just reeking with marijuana. You can get a contact high, bro. Hardcore, but there's no freaking way with three tiers, all these sales and cough to pinpoint. There's no way. They're not even gonna try. They do do things though. They'll put like a sock, a soap in a sock, and they'll hit the sock on the ground like this, and it creates bash the so the soap. It's that what it is that state soap, that cheap ass. They hand out soap to you, and it just it'll break and it'll crumble, and they'll put bars of soap and they'll put baby powder inside of a sock and they'll bang it and they'll try to get a smell that way. Or then also sometimes they will, and I did this on the streets, when Jen and I, on our visits, we get rooms, motel rooms, and she prefers that I don't smoke weed in there, obviously. A couple rooms we had had balconies, because that was cool, hit the balcony, smoke the weed. But dude, I like to take a couple hits off my hooter before bed, I like to smoke weed, bro, I'm a pie head. So we'll be in our room, two, three stories up, I'm obviously not going to want to go down all the way to the parking lot, I want to smoke in the bathroom, just a couple hits. So you take a bag, a plastic bag and you exhale into the bag, and when the bag's all filled up with smoke, you flush it, put it toilet, and you flush it. By flushing it, it sucks all the uh, smoke out. But the gin asked me, like, why don't you just keep inhaling that smoke? And damn, I cannot believe we didn't think about that. You know how many times we'd be in our cell, have some little tiny hooter, some little tiny joint, and me and the celly smoke it, or blowing the weed into a bag, and then flush it when the, the weed's gone, and we could have kept inhaling it. I mean, not... I went like this, like back and forth. But no, I went on it back and forth. I would have took it to the neck. That bag's mine, homeboy. But yeah, why waste it? Shizzing it. On the streets, not so much. So that's one way to combat the smell. For sure. You know what? I'm going to quit smoking weed real, real soon. I'm getting sick of it. I think there's another question asked about weed. I'll go more in depth. But I'm definitely going to quit very soon. In fact, Jen and I, ha Jen and I have a visit planned sometime the 1st of August. I don't want to quit smoking right before that visit because I know I'll be uncomfortable. In fact, it's going to be some content. I'm going to make videos like, okay, this is day one, no weed. This is day two, little clips in the videos because I know it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to want to describe what I'm going through, but I'm not going to want to go through all that during a visit. So, but then again, we've been talking that visit might not happen after all. Snarf, snarf. We'll just see. But hey, coming up real, real soon, real, real shortly, I'm going to quit smoking weed because it's making me complacent. It's making me suffer for less. It's making me comfortable just sitting here and just eat my last piece of pizza and smoke a weed, watch the TV and making videos. And I need to be, bro, grinding harder. But bro, a stoner on that indica. What can I say? So there's that question. Franklin Fernandez, explain what a J-cat is. We love that word. In California prisons, we love it, J-cat. We gotta remember, I mean, lame, punk, bitch, those kind of words are fighting words. I mean, sometimes you might just want to insult someone without being a fighting word. You know, and you want to be like a stupid or dumb dumb head. You want to have something a little bit of edge to it. J cat fits in there perfectly. We love to say J cat. Cuts an insult without being too insulting. And what it ensues, what what someone is Dang, what's number for? Alluding to is that there's a crazy. They're acting off the hook. That's not a chain. Like, dude, you're a J cat. What are you doing that for? You acting like a J cat. You're acting like you're Lost your marbles. You're not all the way there. You're a J cat. And where does it come from? It comes from, look, I wrote it down here. Section J, Article 9. It's literally a code in the prison book. And Section J, Article 9 has to do with, has to do with involuntary administration of psychotic drugs. So if you have an inmate acting all crazy, J cat and out, the cops, according to Section J, Article 9, can force feed him some meds to shut him the physic up. Man. Chew on that a little bit. That can actually force medication upon you if they don't like your attitude. They think you're a J-cat. That's where J-cat comes from. Comes from article. Section J. Article 9. Now, when I was a teenager, I was in a troubled youth, inpatient, medical ward type of thing. I was there. And word got around that if you start acting all real crazy and just start thrashing your room and just acting nuts and they had to tackle you and, t and uh, tie you to this bed, that they gave you a big old shot. They're really like... Bro, it spaced you out and it just shut you down. And everyone was talking about how bomb it was. And I had never even done any drugs. I was like 14, had not experienced the drugs, had no urges for drugs. But that sounded great to just flip out, go all crazy, wreck my room. And they would come in, tackle me, tie me to a bed, tie me to, strap me to some shit, and just give me a shot that would 
Let's do it. I'm down. So I flipped out. I ripped my own robe off. Did all this shit. They put me in a rubber room. Handcuffed me. Came in. Put me to the bed. Yeah, they must have jake had me. Because it administered some stuff. And it was bomb. I was spaced out. But then you go do like a couple days later and they ain't going for it. They'll give you that first one though. Break you off. So that's what old Jake Cat is, man. Sean Myrtle. Thank you for joining it too, brother, by the way. And I don't want to forget that about anybody. Homeboy, Sean Myrtle. Thank you for joining. Any stories of COs showing favoritism to the race? Yes. When I was at Waska Reception, I happened to have the keys to the buildings for the woods. There was this female guard that was showing mad love. That's why I had this tattoo. It's nearly impossible to get a tattoo in Wasco Reception because they strip you down and you got nothing. You need a Walkman motor. You need to be able to have, get some ink, be able to burn some stuff, ink, and you just need things. You need the, the needle and need the batteries and you don't have any of that shit in Wasco Reception. Maybe if you have a lot of yank and a lot of juice and some homeboys, you can shoot a kite to the mainland. A oh, little mainland. Over there to the mainland, mate. Over there to the main line, Wasco A Yard which is a main line and blues, and you're in a reception. Maybe you could shoot them a kite. Hey, homeboy, shoot me a tattoo gun. Shoot me a, a motor. But I've never seen it happen. Hmm. Some people claim to get it done. Bro, I've never seen it happen. What I did see happen is this CO break the woods off. Break them off tough. Mainly because based on she said that her son was a skinhead. So mainly she was dealing with the skinhead car. She was bringing in everything that we needed to do tattoos. She was bringing in cigarettes. I had nothing to do with her. I never talked to her. All the woods were on her and the skinheads. You would think I would talk to her since I had the keys to the building for the woods. But how I operate and how I've always been, if there's one female in a house and there's five or six dudes and all the dudes are on this one female, or we're in the pen in the dorm, one female, all the dudes are on her, I'm not going to be another set of hairy legs like, hey, 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 you know, buying from my position. Let me get in. Hey, you noticed me today? Hi, how are you? Oh, look what I could do. No, bro, if too many people are on her, I'm cool. You guys, you guys got that. Handle that. Let me know if you get the shit so I can get a tattoo out of it. Which is I did. She even made a comment one day. I, I, my, my bed was on the top tier. We always hang out in front of my bed. And she walked by and said to me, you can come down and talk. How come you never come down and talk? I was like, I'm cool. But you know how it got ruined? You know how it got fronted off? And she ended up getting in trouble for showing us all this love? Because of Southsider. Who had the keys to the building for the Southsiders. He claimed like he bullied his way. Where she was showing love to the woods and skinheads. was based on her son being a skinhead. He like bullied her for, for favoritism. He would just like bombard her with this like crowd her space and really talk to her, talk to her all the time. And I remember one time he said to me, he's like, yeah, her and I have a real good bond because she's French and Irish. No, no, she's French and Spanish. And he goes, and I'm French and Spanish too. I was like thinking to myself, homeboy, oh, you're dark as fuck, dog. Like you, I'm not thinking French and Spanish when I look at you, brother. Be that as it may. Anyways, so he's like, yeah, yeah, we got that bond. And he would just crowd her space and be on her bumper. And he convinced her one day he was from Orange County, to bring over a dude from the other side who was from his neighborhood who was in trouble. A side and B side. We're on B side. There's that little walkway. You don't, like, go from side to side. It's unheard of. You just don't do it. But using her juice card, using the cop, had her pull the dude over. It took me to the bathroom and beat his ass and sent him back over. I'll bleed lump lump. Until he fronted her off. Like, whoa, what happened? How'd that dude go from there to there? And just the cop allowed it and didn't say nothing. They have yanking out of there. No longer cop in our building. But hey, homeboy. Sean Myrtle, that's the COIC showing some favoritism. Thank you for joining. And Sector84 said, why do you say bust a grape? Bust a grape is when you're saying someone's like weak and you're not going to fight. Like you won't even bust a grape full. The whole saying is you won't bust a grape in a fruit fight. That's the saying. Or they'll say you won't throw a crayon in a, in a preschool riot or, or in a school fight. Or you won't throw a grape in a cafeteria riot or a food fight. That's where it comes from. You wouldn't bust a grape in a food fight. You wouldn't throw a crayon... At a schoolyard fight or some shit. Yeah, that's what that one is. So, Brew was it? The homeboy Brew asked me this. Was there ever a guy who came in who I, Splinter, thought would not make up a did? Yes, this youngster came in. Hella soft and hella scary. Hella timid. Kept himself. But you know what? Make a wood, don't break a wood. No one bullied him. We let him have a space, but he didn't interact. He was skittish. He'd always make these flowers. You know, they have red top ramen, green top ramen, yellow top ramen. And you cut the top ramen thing so take the red out and it'd be like a red flower and the green for the stem and then the clear around it it'd be it would be a bad out hey i gotta admit it's a pretty cool little flower it's about this big you send them one or two home and your people get in like oh cool flower the problem with him selling those flowers people are gonna buy them once so like, hey got any more of those flowers i sent like 10 home last week i just want like five more for my aunt you know four for my cousin dude i just want to flower them down can you flower me up no bro like 
flower shower and then you start getting known as like the flower dude people are like hey flowers and stuff and it's just like not a good look bro make a flower once or twice you don't want that to be your whole bro persona dog is that your whole identity flowers anyways he was gambling and he won just a bag of fucking steak chips of coming to sack lunch he won the dude's like burn them i'm not paying you shit for the chips we made him fight like dude you won those chips off that dude and he's just like mm, good chips good chips they're like bro you cannot let him play you like that Rush that ass, flowers. He did bake bush me. He did beat that ass. He did rush that ass. He did a pretty good job of it too. Had hands that I don't think he even knew he had. He put knots on the dude's head that the Boy Scouts couldn't untie. And afterwards, everyone's like, dude, awesome, awesome. He's like, I don't make flowers anymore. I gamble for a living. And one time he even tried to come at me a little crazy. So he got so full of himself in that fight. He said, oh, tough splinter had lived. I said, Tch, better kick back home, boy. I'm not Fat Freddy, dog. I will lump you the physic up, doggy. So anyway, but he doesn't maybe. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to make it. He ended up doing pretty good. Can't remember his name, though. See, what well, he didn't do it that good. But um, I definitely saw a change. Joshua Barrio. What's the strangest thing you ever seen a guy bring in? I seen a guy, and he ended up getting fucked up for this, too. Because it's so weird and out of line. This guy came in. He was the homeboy cell. He came at night. He's like, I hoops him. I got something. He just squatted right there on the floor. Usually we go to the toilet. Usually we get all the water out. You would take some newspaper and you would line it in case so it doesn't get flushed by accident. This dude didn't use the toilet. He used the floor and his hand. He just like squatted right there and he's like, no, 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 don't, don't. He's like, no, I got it. It's just right here. It's just right here. And pulled out a lighter. Not even in like any kind of plastic bag or anything. Not even in a finger. Just a lighter. Just like the cops came and rushed out of me. Just boop, put the lighter up there real quick. And then came and just like laid an egg. A, a homeboy cell floored. And freaking need him in the face. That's a whole different story. I'm going to talk that about in a video soon. Bro, and he's like, um, if anyone wants to smoke a cigarette, brother, they can use my lighter, but i, I got to be able to light it for him. I'm charging two hits. Use my lighter. Like, we got matches, you dumb dumb. Like, you just laid an egg. That was odd. And I seen a dude bring in a full syringe of heroin. He hooped it. And I don't know how I was thinking about this, how the plunger didn't get pushed in. I was really thinking about that because he was walking around real painful, real uncomfortable, like this, in the holding tank. We got busted. And he's like, hey, he's like, I got to. A syringe of heroin hooped. I'm gonna take it out. I can't handle it anymore. If someone takes it for me, hoops it for me, when we get to the other side and they pull it out, I'll split it with you. Because back then we all went to A pod in pretrial. Someone's like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I was thinking, damn, like that? You should have been like, um, hmm, I guess I'll do He's like, I, I got you. Like, bro, not so eager beaver, brother. Shit, you never like bought like a car for you, salesman. You're like, mmm, 700? I got six. Like, bargain, dog. You're all on it, like freaking white on rice, dog. Sheesh. Anyways, I got it, I got it. Says the guy. So he gives him this full syringe and then he runs with it. Then we did get over the A-pod. The guy who originally brought it in ended up being my cellie. So the guy unhooped it and took it to him. Okay, here it is. And then he was pacing our cell. Waiting for his issue. Waiting for dude to do it and give him his half for bringing it in. But instead, my cellie, the dude who originally brought it in, was like, Get the fuck off my cell! You're fucking me off! And he was telling me, I'm gonna fuck that dude up. He's asking me, you want some? I was like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, I'm gonna fuck that dude. He's fucking me off. Yelling at him, get the fuck away from me. And he ended up getting nothing. For bringing it in. But he didn't. Plus the grape. He was a pussy. That dude was crazy. He brought that shit in. He used him. He used his booty hole. That's straight out of line, dog. Hey. Cam. What's up with the homeboy Cam? What's up, brother? Cam. Ever heard of an inmate being in a relationship with someone? Yes, I was in the kitchen. There's a dude that was sprung in a relationship with this chick. She was a free staff. And she was an alcoholic, and she's as ugly as a day is long, bro. And he wasn't even getting nothing from her. He wouldn't get no tobacco. He wouldn't get nothing. He's like, we'd like, bro, get her to bring you some. I tried. I tried. She's like, well, I'm getting laid. And he will get laid, but who cares? And then someone started a rumor, one of her other co-workers, that I guess she went to a company um, Christmas party, and it just blew everybody type shit. And then the inmate, the homeboy, was all, get all tripped out and let him bother him. Dog, she was just... Boning everybody at the company party. Who cares, dog? You don't who gives a fuck. She's ugly. She's just giving you some pussy sitting and you're not even getting nothing out of her. And it's like, dang, you're way too attached. And not only that, he had a girlfriend. We would go back to the cell block, and if she didn't write him that letter like twice a week, he'd be flipping out on his old lady. He'd be flipping out on his ugly, ugly ass free staff. So I've seen it. Seen it, homeboy. We gotta wind it down, man. Adam Casey, most scared in prison. Most scared in prison I was was when a paisa bit this wound on the face. And it was turning into a big ass fucking riot, and the South Siders got involved, and it was gonna be like five woods, me one of them. The dude with the bit face is already gone. 
it was five woods against about 20 dudes. And it was up by barracks 7 and 8, up on a hill. Cops couldn't see it. God, I'm going to keep it real. Sometimes if you're getting stomped down, just beat the fuck up. I mean, you would appreciate the cops breaking it up. You're not mad when you hear, hey, 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 break it up. Like, you don't want to fight in front of a cop, like intentionally wait for a cop to come by and take off the PC move. But bro, if you're up on a hill, away from the cops, and you hear him come running, when you're on the ground getting stomped, bro, is that a bad thing? So, I was a little nervous. Five of us against 20 over this whole thing. And it ended up being, it did end up kicking off, but not like that. It ended up being felt less. And again, story for another video. So that tripped me out. And also, to answer your question, one time we were really outnumbered. But that was also from the pen. I got like nerves of steel now, county jail days. Then also, my first term, I went to go slam a door going to dinner. They're like, last call, last call for dinner. Everyone went. I didn't want to go. I was playing cards and I lost a card game. And it's like, fuck it, I'm going to go to dinner. And dude was talking shit. And I was like, slamming the door. And the cop went to say, last call. And the door slammed on him. He fell down. And he was trying to work like rumors cop, but he got up all limp and stuff. What do you think they called it? Assault on staff. Snatched me up, threw in the, me in a hole right there. I had 30 days left. Assault on staff. Since I'm at a CCF, my brother's CCF, they're gonna send me to D6, the whole law school reception. I'm gonna stay there, find a term, a jury referral, go to the shoe. Dude, I was gonna go home in a month. That I was scared of that, but it all got squashed. It got called horseplay. I'm gonna cut the string, let it fly. Peace.